Steve Pelour, quarterback for the Huskies. He wants to throw, incomplete. He was trying to throw to the fullback, Chris James, coming out of the backfield at the 41 of the Huskies. The pass was low, Curley and Turner on coverage. Well, Chris James was open, the pass was thrown low, and it was, would have been a great catch had James Vale to hang on to it. The ball was thrown very, very low. Pelour has, a, has attempted only eight passes today, completed two for only seven yards. Well, they haven't made a lot of yards on their own against this fine Trojan deep, and neither team's made, a, made great yardage. Second and ten now at the Husky 33. Into the middle comes Jock Robinson. And Robinson goes close to the 40, about the 39, a gain of six, tackled by Neil Hope. So it'll be third down, four at the 39. Uh, this uh, Rose Bowl picture is becoming more jumbled, Mike both by the Big Ten. Now the Big Ten's clarified a little bit. Michigan wins next week. They won today. They'll be in the driver's seat. They'll go to the Rose Bowl. Robinson, Jock Robinson, a freshman from San Jose, and the Trojans say that he fumbled the ball. Troy West says, hey, we got it. No signal yet from the officials as the unpile. Yeah, Trojans have the ball. Robinson did fumble, and Neil Hope comes up with it. Freshman linebacker Neil Hope. We'll have to see if we can picture this now on the replay. Uh, there is a bobble there, but such a, a mass of bodies there. Well, Jack Del, Rio, Jack Del Rio made the tackle. Jack Del Rio made the tackle, and Neil Hope made the recovery. Now the Trojans have a great opportunity with eight minutes and 47 seconds remaining, a 3-3 tie. There is Neil Hope and uh, Keith Bronner, along with Ussery, Dennis Edwards, Jack Del Rio, Trojans with a first down at the Washington 41. Common eyes in the slot to the right. It's Marcus Allen into the middle. Marcus Allen goes to the 35, a pickup of six, tackled by Tony Caldwell and Ken Driscoll. Well, we've shown you this play so many, many times this year. Marcus Allen up over guard. Just finding a little runner room, taking a surge of bodies with them. He just, behind that offensive line, he moves the defense back for six or seven yards. It'd be second and three, a long three. Down on, almost in field goal range now. Todd Spencer, the fullback. Marcus Allen, the tailback. Center is Slayton. Todd Spencer into the middle. Gets a couple, but the Huskies gang tackle him at the 32. Madsen, Caldwell, Giroux were the first three men in there. So it'll be third down now and about a yard. You're right, it's a short yard. It's a, it, it, it's a, maybe about a, a foot and a half to go. Well, Simmons comes out, two tight ends, McCool and Cornwell. Perhaps a quarterback sneak right here. Balls at the 32 of the Huskies. It's going to be Marcus Allen stopped at the 30. Looks like he's got it. That second effort by Marcus Allen, he was hit around the 31, managed to slant ahead to the 30. Maybe in the biggest run of the day for Marcus Allen. Here you'll see he gets hit behind the line of scrimmage, and only that great second effort enables him to make the first down on the 30-yard line. Ken Driscoll got him down at the 30, and the Trojans have a first down at the Husky 30. 7.20 left. Marcus Allen with 159 yards and 37 difficult carries. It's Allen to the left side. And he was pulled down by Tony Caldwell. Roy Foster was out there leading interference, and Caldwell was able to fend off that block and get to the ball carrier, Allen. Allen has very, had very little success against going wide against this fine uh, Husky defense. Their secondary men are playing so close, and they're right there waiting for him on these wide plays. His most successful ventures have been going inside from tackle to tackle. A loss of a yard, second and 11 at the Husky 31. Simmons, Kamana, wide right. Major wants to throw, dumps it off to Marcus Allen. Allen is pulled down, a loss. Tackle is made by Stewart, Mark Stewart, the outside linebacker. A little swing pass now out in the flat to Marcus Allen. He had nowhere to go, no running room. 
A loss. Was waiting for him. A uh, loss. Uh, three yards. It'll be third down and 14 for the Trojans at the Washington 34. I don't believe that Jordan can kick that ball 51 yards into that wind. May not be able to. Less than six minutes. The clock running. 5.55 to go. Talk about your big third down plays. Here is one. Malcolm Moore wide to the right side. Simmons wide left. Long count. Penalty marker. Delay of the game against Southern California. No, it's timeout. I think he caught the time, but Major called timeout. But a penalty marker was dropped. Well, I think uh, I think the referee is going to overrule that. See, the the time is kept by the back judge. I think that the referee is going to overrule him and say that that Major signal a timeout in time. It'll be a timeout charge. They can't do both. They can't charge him with a timeout and then penalize him. I saw the yellow penalty marker come flying out. And there's the referee, Don Wilson, yeah. and here's the walk-off. Back to the 39. Delay of the game. So we have five minutes and 44 seconds left. 3-3. Three, three. I think the referee is very remiss. Your Chevy dealers are way ahead. Your Chevy dealers have the greatest selection of light-duty trucks in America today at 81 cleanup prices. Chevy trucks are a proven payload of value. Trucks and the very popular vans that have been setting the American standard for work and play. In fact, after 10 years of service, 94.4% of all Chevrolet trucks are still on the job. Now your Southern California Chevrolet dealers are offering tremendous clearance values on their complete line of 1981 trucks, including four-wheel drive for those off-road adventures. And Chevy truck fuel economy is amazing. Your Chevy dealers are now offering a choice of four 81 model trucks that deliver 19 MPG or better. And right now, your Southern California Chevy dealers must clear out the 81s to make way for the 82s. So make a great deal on brand new Chevy trucks at 81 clearance prices today. Hey now, the Chevy dealers way ahead. It's third down, 19, the ball at the Husky 39. Timmy White, Jeff Simmons, wide right. Major throws over the head. Oh, it's intercepted. I'm dropped in the end zone. The pass from Major for White overthrew Timmy White, and it was almost intercepted by Bill Stapleton. He must have juggled that ball a good five or six steps. Well, the best thing he did was not catch it because uh, it had been hit it down and been down in the end zone. David Pryor into punt on fourth down. The, the officials are very remiss. Referees, it's, it's his responsibility to get the crowd noise down so the offensive quarterback and the players can hear the signals. We have 524 left. Limebox snaps it to Pryor, and Pryor boots it high into the air. It'll hit at the 18, and it'll bounce back to the 20. So the Huskies will have the ball from their own 20-yard line with only 5 minutes and 14 seconds left. USC 3 and the Huskies 3. Those aren't woodpeckers. They're knocks knocking around your engine. Can we knock them out? Sure, I was super lead-free sky chief. Texaco's high as octane unleaded gasoline. Higher octane helps knock out the knocks. Joey, you hear any woodpeckers lately? Nope, Mr. Hope. Thanks to Texaco's super lead-free sky chief. Helps knock out the knocks. Joey, give me one right here. Okay, champ. It outsells Datsun, outsells Chrysler, outsells Honda. It outsells all the Oldsmobiles, and Ford, and Toyota, too. It outsells every car maker, foreign or domestic. It's the best-selling car in America. Chevrolet, number one. 
Now's the time to see your Southern California Chevrolet dealer. It's cleanup value time. Hurry. One thing the Husky fans are hoping right here, no turnovers. Not on this end. Pelour throws on the run to Scanzi, out of bounds at the 31. First down, Husky. There, the pass is thrown to Skank, uh, the leading receiver, Skansky. Number seven, takes the ball out. Joe Turner forces him out of bounds. A pickup of 11 yards and a first down for the Huskies. 5-0-8 remaining. 3-3 three, three tie. The lure giving off to Jock Robinson. Georgia Chica is there at uh, corral him at the 34. Gain of three by Robinson, a freshman running back from San Jose. Time is becoming a big factor now in this game, Mike. Rounding down, only four minutes and 49 seconds left in the game. Neither team able to do much offensively this half. If this should result in a tie, well, we'll get to that in a moment. Here's Pelour throwing and dropped by Anthony Allen, and a penalty marker goes down. Pass interference. I believe it's going to be ruled against Joey Browner. A very marginal call. It could be called either way. You notice that Fuller was almost hit. He gets rid of the ball, and Joey Browner came over the shoulder. Well, that'll give the Huskies an automatic first down at their 48. Four and a half minutes left. Jordan, a 45-yard field goal. Nelson, a 21-yard field goal. All in the first half, and that's the only scoring we've had today. From the Washington 48, Pelour winds up and throws to James at the 40, down to the 35. And now the Huskies are getting into field goal range of Chuck Nelson. Well, they're already in, in uh, field goal range now without wind. They're on the 35-yard line after that pass to Skansky. The Trojans need a very big defensive play now. They've got to be aggressive and get, hopefully throw the, for a couple of losses down here. John Harvey replaces Dennis Edwards as a tackle on defense the left side. Here comes Jock Robinson. He goes to the 32. A gain of three by Robinson. Second and seven, tackle made by August Curley. You're talking about what would a tie do? Well, a tie would mean that the, the Trojans would have to win the game next week against UCLA to go to the Rose Bowl. A, a loss would mean that all Washington State would have to do to go to the Rose Bowl would have beat, beat the Huskies next week. The Cougars have a loss and a tie in pack in play. That loss, of course, to USC. Here it's second and seven. Oh! Pelour fumbled a snap from center, and Pelour covered for the Huskies. Well, here we have a big play now coming up. We're going to have a third down play. It was recovered by the Huskies on that snap from center. Pelour didn't have control of the ball. He came out without the ball. Just looking ahead, Chuck Nelson's longest field goal, 51 yards. So that he, would, he'd have to, right now, he'd have to tie that probably, uh, or, or beat it by a yard. The ball is at the 35. Third down and nine. The give is to Jock Robinson straight ahead. Down to the 29. Georgia Chica made the tackle. And here comes Chuck Nelson. Chuck Nelson, who was the leading scorer in the Pac-10 last season with 85 points. One of the premier field goal kickers in the conference. And Nelson, a 21-year-old junior from Everett, Washington, right here in the Seattle area. He's going to try to win the game for the Huskies. Two and a half minutes left. This will be an attempt from the 38. Thus, it would be a 48-yard field goal. The kick by Nelson. It's got the distance. It is
Huskies celebrate. Two minutes and 19 seconds left. A 48-yard field goal by Chuck Nelson. And the junior from Everett has given the Huskies a 6-3 lead. It outsells Dotson, outsells Chrysler, outsells Honda. It outsells all the Oldsmobiles, and Ford, and Toyota too. It outsells every car maker, foreign or domestic. It's the best-selling car in America. Chevrolet, number one. Now's the time to see your Southern California Chevrolet dealer. It's cleanup value time. Hurry. For special savings on Zenith Color TV, visit ABC Premiums on Beverly Boulevard in Los Angeles. ABC Premiums is expanding to serve you better. ABC Premiums is a Monsoor enterprise. Well, this is a, a stunned uh, USC squad, and, and I think the, the Trojan fans who made the trip up here are really shocked. Here's the kickoff by Nelson. It'll be over the head of Crutcher, and Crutcher has to cover it in the end zone. Let's see what's going to happen here. Coming up with the ball is Fred Small for the Huskies. And it's going to be a touchdown. Crutcher touched the ball, and it was covered in the end zone by Fred Small. Touchdown for the Huskies. response tells the whole story the crowd speaks more eloquently than anyone else could that football in the shape that it's in takes some funny bounces and the ball skipped right over Crutcher's head he went back touched the ball around the two couldn't cover it in the end zone Fred Small did touchdown for the Huskies the extra point attempt by Nelson bang right through just like that, the Huskies have a 13 to 3 lead over the Trojans. Hockey team captain Mike Ruzioni helped clinch the gold for the U.S. I'm Mike Ruzioni, the artist. Budweiser asked me to paint with these to help raise funds for America's Olympic athletes. Now you can own my painting and help our athletes train for 84. After all, there are a lot of Picassos. There's only one, Ruzioni. Call 1-800-325-1488 for more information. Umbrellas are being thrown out of the stands. Rain gear. The Huskies celebrating on a blistery, leaden sky day here in Seattle. As the Husky fans came out to this stadium today, almost in a chorus, they said, ah, this is Husky weather. Well, not only is it Husky weather, it's turned out to be a Husky day. 13 to 3 with 2 minutes and 19 seconds left. Well, this uh, must give the Cougars a lot of encouragement. Next week, if they can come into Seattle here, I believe the game's played here, and, and play the Huskies and win, they would automatically go to the Rose Bowl because uh, they had the same, they'd have the, the best record in the conference. The only team that could tie them would be UCLA, and, and they haven't been there for a long time, so the Huskies would, or the Cougars would automatically go. Good. Which, could you believe a Rose Bowl matchup New Year's Day of Washington State and Iowa? Could be. Well, some people said it'd be good for football, but uh, I think all the Trojan fans will be disappointed that their Trojan team is that coming man. on the short, short end today because they played so well all year long. And, but these are young men, and uh, football is such a game of emotion, and you can't be up every week. That man we just had a picture of, Coach Don James of the Huskies, is within two minutes and 19 seconds of having a 
a four and three record as a head coach against USC. Not many can make that statement. No one can make that statement in the, in the last seven years. <laughs> Nelson will kick off. Crutcher, same thing. Picked up now by Todd Spencer at the two, and Spencer's down at the one. That was almost a replay of what we saw just moments ago. Uh, we talked about the importance of the kicking game and how the Don James team every year excel in the kicking game. They do. That's what that's a turn the tide last week, uh, last year in the Trojan game. Punt return, kickoff return. Boy, what a turnaround of events. Just a few seconds ago, it was a 3-3 tie. Now it is 13-3 Huskies, and the Trojans have a first down, but at their own one-yard line with two minutes and 16 seconds left. Now they got to worry about getting a little running room. Major from the end zone throws incomplete to Marcus Allen. If the Huskies win this one, and they're up by 10 with two minutes and 11 seconds left. It'll be the first time that John Robinson has ever lost to an opponent two years in a row. Huskies won in Los Angeles over SC 20 to 10 a year ago. So that these young men playing for both teams, you know, they one week they're emotionally high and then another, like last week, the Huskies couldn't do anything right. That's right, and they kept turning the ball over and UCLA won in a breeze 31 to nothing. Major from the end zone fires it and he completes it this time to Malcolm Moore who goes up to the 23. First down for the Trojans and that'll stop the clock at 2.03. Here's a shot of that crossing pattern. Number 22 Malcolm Moore takes it. This has been the most successful pass pattern for the Trojans all year. They're gonna, we're gonna have to have a, a couple of miracles here, a couple of long bombs to get the Trojans back in the game. But only two minutes left. Major throwing way, and it's almost intercepted. Vince Newsom was the closest man to that ball. I think he was throwing to Malcolm Moore, but that pass was way over Moore's head, and Newsom had an almost. Yes, it was almost interception. The ball was thro <laughs> thrown well over Malcolm Moore, the intended receiver. He's going down the middle, the ball sails over his head into the hands of Newsom, who almost had an interception. A loss here today would... Uh, make the Trojan record 8-2 and two and 4-2 and two in the Pac-10. Huskies would go up to 8-2 and 5-2 and, and two in league play. Major unloads this time to Timmy White, out of bounds. Even had White been able to bring that ball in, he would have been out of bounds, way out of bounds. Well, there were only three defenders around him. I, I, I don't know if there was anyone else open or not, but White certainly wasn't open. There's a linebacker and two deep secondary men all around him. The Huskies have victories over UOP, 34 to 14. They beat Kansas State, 20 to 3, 17 to 3 at Oregon. And they lost to Arizona State up here in Seattle, the fourth game of the season, 26 to 7. Sun Devils, they say, really did a number on the Huskies that day. Mike Pagel was perfect. John Major is sacked back at the 17. Mark Stewart got him down. We have a minute and 35 seconds left. 13 to 3 Huskies. One eighteen to go now. Major pulls back to crank it up again. Incomplete. Off the hands of Malcolm Moore. One oh nine left. And Pryor will have to punt. And I mean to tell you, the city of Seattle and Husky fans are about ready to have one giant celebration. The Trojans came in here favored by a touchdown and a field goal. But the Huskies are leading by that margin. Ten points. 13 to 3. 109 left. Next week it'll be USC and uh, UCLA. 
in a renewal of the Crosstown rivalry in the Coliseum. Kickoff time, 12.50. Chris James right into the middle. And Chris James stopped at the 15. Uh, August Curley. You might be able to do a little research there, Mike. And uh, when is the last time that the Trojans were held without scoring a touchdown? That'd be interesting because invariably they score at least one touchdown. Right. Marcus Allen hasn't scored today. Of course, none of the Trojans have. But Allen has had at least one touchdown in every game this year. Clock moving, and uh, the Huskies will be content just to let that clock run out, and they might even take a delay of the game penalty. That's not going to mean anything right now. And there's the penalty marker, five yards delay of the game. And the happy Husky fans here in Seattle. That'll put the ball back at the 20. Only 24 seconds left. So Don James has done it two years in a row to USC in Los Angeles last year. Here in Seattle this year, the two clubs will not meet in 1982. And that should do it. 18 seconds. Marcus Allen for the day winds up with 158 yards in 38 carries. The closing seconds, the Trojans won't be any attempt to run off another play. Five seconds, four, the crowd counting down the final seconds. The Huskies have upset the Trojans, 13 to three here in Seattle. The Huskies, eight and two overall and five and two in the Pac-10. The Trojans with an eight and two record, four and two in the league. Final score, Huskies 13 and the Trojans three. University of Southern California football has been brought to you by your Southern California Chevrolet dealers who remind you that it's clearance time. Make your best deal on a brand new 1981 Chevrolet and save. And by Western Airlines. Western gives you the low fares and friendly service that make flying a pleasure. Giving you more. That's the Western way. By Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Standard Brands Paint and Decorating Centers. Standard Brands. They're not too big to care. And by Texaco. Star quality products and regular maintenance that your independent Texaco retailer can help you get the most from your car. So as you drive, always look for the sign of the Texaco Star. The executive producer of USC football has been Bob Speck. This telecast produced by Pete Columbus. Directed by John Povich. A reminder of our next game, next Saturday night at 11, when it'll be USC versus UCLA. Final score again of this game today from Seattle. Washington 13, Southern California 3. And now, this is Mike Walden speaking for Duffy Doherty saying good night from Seattle, Washington. This has been a production of the Bob Speck Sports Company.